Do you think your early relationships with your own parents have prepared you for relationship success in the future? Doomed you to be forever alone? Or set you up to repeat a never-ending cycle of unfulfilling friendships and romances? We can investigate if early attachment influences childhood and adult relationships by simply comparing attachment styles in infancy to that child's later childhood and attachment relationships and seeing if a pattern forms. If it's true, it's a little terrifying that someone could be stuck with poor relationships their entire lives just because of a bad first few years. And even worse, pass this relationship style down to their own children, resulting in generation after generation living unfulfilled lives. The Psych Boost Flashcard app has a new feature. Test yourself with over 1,500 multiple choice questions, including every topic on A-level or GCSE psychology. Try Paper 1 for free right now. And Patreon supporters can watch Psych Boost videos ad-free, learn from over 17 hours of exclusive exam tutorial videos, and access hundreds of digital and printable resources, including mind maps, quiz sheets, worksheets, teaching slides, and more. The Influence of Early Attachment on Childhood and Adult Relationships We've discussed the concept of an internal working model before in this attachment unit. We now need to consider how an internal working model influences later relationships. So as a reminder, according to Bowlby, an infant develops a schema about how relationships work based on their experience with their primary caregiver, their mother. This schema is the internal working model, and it includes expectations about whether the other person in the relationship can be trusted, or if relationships are affectionate and loving. The continuity hypothesis argues that infants' future childhood and adult relationships will follow a pattern based on their internal working model. This relationship pattern includes friends at school, romantic partners in adulthood, and even their parenting relationships with their children, potentially passing on a dysfunctional internal working model to the next generation. The researchers Hazen and Shaver think Ainsworth's classification of mother-infant attachment styles of secure, insecure avoidant, and insecure resistant can be applied to later attachment, with those infants who had a secure relationship in infancy going on to have the social abilities needed to develop secure adult and childhood relationships. But this means insecure infants will struggle to have effective later relationships. Another aspect of early attachment we can consider is Balby's maternal deprivation theory. Balby argued that children whose care is disrupted in the critical period develop serious social, emotional, and intellectual difficulties. These issues will then limit the children's ability to have positive relationships in the future. Evaluations Hazen and Shiva carried out the most important research in this area. The researchers published a love quiz in newspapers and received 620 responses. The quiz included questions on the participants' current relationship and their relationship with their mothers in infancy. The questions on existing relationships classified participants as secure if they looked for a balance between closeness and independence, avoidant if they avoided intimacy, and anxious if they couldn't cope with autonomy. The researchers found that 56% of participants were secure, 25% were avoidant, and 19% were anxious. These are similar percentages to those found in the strained situation. Also, there was a correlation between adult attachment style and recalled infant attachment type. More detailed results support the idea of an internal working model of relationships, with securely attached adults believing love was long-lasting. They also reported more happiness and less loneliness than insecure adults. We can criticise Hazen and Shaver for depending on the accurate recall of childhood attachment type. McCarthy used 40 women who had had their attachment style assessed as infants in early strain situation studies. McCarthy found the infants assessed as secure in infancy grew into women with long-lasting and secure adult relationships, including friendships and romantic relationships. The insecure avoidant infants grew into adults with poor romantic relationships, and the anxious infants had poor friendships, and both insecure groups were more likely to live with a deviant partner. So, McCarthy's results also suggest that the early attachment style of infants is linked to their adult attachment style. This video is about how early attachment can influence childhood and adult relationships. So far, I've only given you research on adult relationships. Marion Wilson's study assessed 196 nine-year-old children. Their relationship with their parents was assessed, and the children were classified as showing bullying or victimhood behavior. Marion Wilson found parenting styles that scored low in parental warmth and high in neglect were linked to children who were assessed as bullies. 
while the children assessed as victims in school had parents who focused on punishments. This research suggests that parenting style can influence their child's relationship with other children. In the first attachment video, I gave you a study by Verissimo. This study found that the father has a role in the socialization of children. This study indicated that a good early relationship with the father leads to more friends when the child gets to nursery. This means that the Verismo study can also be used in this section when discussing how infant attachment influences childhood relationships. Understanding how vital an infant's first attachment is for childhood and adult relationships has practical applications. It can influence early years education, with schools adapting their teaching to help children develop more effective internal working models. This intervention could reduce bullying and childhood loneliness in school and help the children achieve relationship stability later in life. We can even link this to the economy, as adults with stable relationships will reduce costs due to divorce and family breakdown. However, we can criticise research on the link between early and later attachments for relying on correlational data. It's not possible to establish a cause and effect relationship with correlational data. Variables such as poverty or inherited genetics may be responsible. Also, this research tends to use self-report methods of data collection, and current and infant relationship styles may be reported inaccurately, either due to flawed memory, demand characteristics, or possibly more likely considering the topic of personal relationships, social desirability bias, the participant wanting to give answers that make them look good. There's also a very convincing alternative explanation of attachment that would explain the correlation between adult and infant attachment styles. Kagan's temperament hypothesis argues that babies are born with an inherited high or low reactive temperament. High reactivity babies are often distressed, and they grow into adults who are anxious and inhibited. In contrast, infants with low reactivity show little distress and grow into outgoing adults. Parents of high reactivity infants will likely struggle to raise them, potentially showing little sensitive responsiveness. This biological explanation also shows that relationship styles last a lifetime without needing the internal working model as an explanation. Most people like to believe they've got free will, that they fully control their relationship choices and behaviour. The continuity hypothesis argues that relationships are deterministic, effectively saying people's relationship styles are set as infants, so they're doomed to repeat the same types of relationships repeatedly. I want to thank everyone over on Patreon for supporting the channel. Because of you, I've been able to teach part-time, meaning I can make Psych Boost on YouTube for everyone. And a special thank you to Kat Posnick and Ahmed Romani for supporting at the developer level. I do have extra resources that are exclusive to my patrons, so if you decide to sign up, you can grab those over my website. And these include over 100 exam question tutorial videos, of course including questions on the attachment unit. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next Psych Boost video. 